Our mission is for a child not to feel afraid of the world they live in. Our job is to help the children feel safe and empowered enough to be able to tell their story. BACA stands for Bikers Against Child Abuse. have about 14 grandchildren. Four of them were abused by a neighbor and uh, my son was trying to figure out what to do and how to solve, uh, how to help the children. And he ran into the Baca guys when they were riding one day and started talking to them. And he called me up and said, Dad, you gotta get involved in this. He said, they need you. So I joined. I, I wanted to do anything I could do to help the grandchildren and and in a larger sense, be able to help the community in general so that this kind of thing didn't happen again. So, and it's, it's, I love being able to see those little kids change from frightened f about their environment children to children that are confident and able to go out and do the things they like to do again. And I saw my grandchildren go from being able to being victims and being hurt and being afraid to tell their story and to see it happen in my own life, to see my own grandchildren progress through the steps where they can now say, I was hurt, yeah, it was bad, but now I'm better, and life's gonna get better every single day. You can't keep me from going to adoptions now. Our primary, our first interface as a club with, with the children is when we adopt them into the organization. And we all get on the motorcycles, we all meet at a certain place, and we all show up at this child's designated location. Sometimes it's at their house, sometimes it's a park near their house because there's not enough places for 50 motorcycles to park, and those kind of things. And uh, that's, that's when we first meet the child. Um, so the Advocacy Center mentioned that they work with a group of bikers <laughs> and that this group of bikers was called BACA and they told us what BACA stood for, Bikers Against Child Abuse. And my parents made the choice because they were very um, isolated as well. You know, they were going through a very difficult time as parents walking through their own process. And so after, you know, they told my parents about BACA, they said, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll check them out and we'll give them a call and uh, see see how it goes, see if this works. That Saturday morning, the doorbell rang, and uh, you know, we went to the door and saw two of the most head-to-toe, decked-out bikers you could ever see. I mean, legit bikers, and it's cuts, yeah, boots, um, you name it, you know, brass knuckles. I mean, just unbelievable um, bikers, but they were friendly. <laughs> You know, I started to feel really um, empowerment. I started to feel uh, myself change just as I was talking with them. Um, and, you know, so they, they told me, they said, you know, so if you'd like to do this, you know, we can schedule a time for an adoption. And I thought, oh, an adoption, that's really cool. Like, they're going to adopt me into their group, me. They're going to adopt me into their group, you know, and it's just this sense of um, belonging and, and social support and encouragement. And, uh, you know, they said, but, you know, when we do this adoption, you're going to get your own vest, you're going to get your own cut, and you get a road name. And they asked me, you know, what do you think your road name would want to be? You know, I said, I want to be feared. And it's because I was feeling that empowerment. And I looked over very seriously at her because I was thinking hard about it. And I said, Venom. So they said, okay, you know, Armlock said, if that's the name you want, then, then that's what we'll put on your wrist. For us, it happened at our house. And there were about 40 bikes lining our street. And since my adoption, I've quit cutting. I, my nightmares have pretty much gone away, which is awesome. I've become like a whole 180 of how I was when I first got adopted in. But I mean, I before I had told them about what had happened, it had already been going on for two years, three years. So it kind of keeping that under wraps from letting family know or pretty much anyone know, it kind of takes a toll on you. So it completely changed me. And, but 
since Pocket, I've definitely grown into a lot better of a me than I could have without them. They do whatever they can to make sure that us kids keep a smile on our face and know that there's people that care and know that there's people that will do pretty much anything to make sure that it doesn't happen to you again. One of the things that we do at this adoption, when we adopt these kids into our, into, when we get adopted into their family, or that we adopt them into the Baca family, is we give them a teddy bear. Now, you don't think much about a teddy bear, but we can't be there 24 hours a day all the time with those kids. So what we do is we take this teddy bear and we take this teddy bear and every single person in that organization hugs that teddy bear and we fill that teddy bear up and give it to the child and tell that child it's full of empowerment and hugs and, and security so they feel good about having a teddy bear. And Trappy, the president, always tells them when he has a bad day, he hugs his teddy bear. When a child sees grown men and women hugging a teddy bear and then they hand it to them, it's, it's remarkable what it does for a child because now that bear is special, all right? And we present them with a nightlight, we present them with a blanket and a pillowcase that everyone signs. And it's amazing. They go to bed at night with their bear, with their pillowcase, and with their blanket. And when you see a child sleep for the first time in six months, because we showed up that's, that's the payday, that's all I need to know. And that's why we're here. We don't do this for any other, any other reason. We're not the judge, we're not the, the lawyers, we're not, the, we're not the DA, that's not what we are about. We're not counselors, that's, that's not what we do. We're not involved in anything that has to do with the, the mental aspects of a child other than just supporting them and being there for them. That's our role and we don't get outside of that role. We provide them a group of people that are, are gonna stand behind them. And if there's a perpetrator, I'm willing to stand between that perpetrator and that child to shield them from abuse. And from the time that I actually uh, made my outcry to the, our actual day in court was um, over a year. So um, it's a very tough process and I'm, I'm so grateful that Baco was there um, to walk alongside us. It made all the difference in the world that Baco was there for me um, during the days of the trial um, because unfortunately you know it was my family's side of the courtroom and then it was his um, and then my perpetrator he's there sitting just five feet away from me um, staring at me you know and I was on the witness stand for about three and a half hours but I, I had some moments where I, it was very difficult to talk about and you know, I, I, would, I got emotional. Um, but I would just look, I would just look down the aisle and I would see the Baca members there. And I knew that they were there for me. When a child goes to court and testifies, their parents or their guardians many times are called, as, are called as potential witnesses by the defense attorneys. So they can't be in the court when the child testifies. So many times the child is testifying and there's a whole group of people there that are supporting the perpetrator and nobody there is supporting the child. Well, we kind of level that. We make it equal and we can show up and just be a part of the child's life. We don't have to show up as bikers, we just show up and we just blend in. And they know we're there and they know who we are and we're there to support them. It was very empowering um, once I was finished and even as I walked out the door and uh, <laughs> out of the courtroom into the witness room, I, I gave a little yelp of victory and put my hands in the air and the Baca members were there to greet me. They gave me hugs and um, it was just, you know, they were celebrating the fact that I did it. I, I got on that witness stand. We're there and we've been in their lives and they know us. They know who we are. And when a child goes to like the camp out and sees 
six, seven hundred people there, a whole bunch of other children that have been abused. Number one, they don't feel like they're alone. They know they've been, they, they have support and people that care about them. So when it's time to go to court, <laughs> they, they're ready to tell their story. We came to actually know about Baca because my daughter Anna was adopted into Baca 10 years ago. Because of some circumstances that she had gone through um, and a best friend of hers had gone through, her best friend got adopted into Baca. And up to that point, we had never heard of Baca. The biggest impact that, um, that I really saw was when we went to court. Um, by the grace of God, she never had to testify. Um, but they decided to do a, an impact statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Telling their, per their perpetrator, this is what you've done to me. And we had a number of Baca members there. When we got to the courthouse from the other parking lot, you know, the Baca members surrounded us. And there was never a point where we were alone. When we were in the courtroom and you know she she's giving her impact statement and the perpetrator is just kind of you know just staring off in space and stuff. She was able to take the strength by looking at these members sitting over here and turn and look at her perpetrator and say look at me. That's what this is about. Give them that child strength. We're gonna help them be able to stand against a really bad person and tell the story. That's all they have to do. Just that is the empowerment that they need in order to move past it and get by. Now we don't take anything away from the counselors, the people that prepare them for, that, that go through the, the court liaisons that, that that go through the, the prepping and to, and to helping the child understand what they're doing. We don't get into that. We don't talk about the case ever. That part really doesn't matter to us. Our job is to make sure the child is okay and had the opportunity to tell the story. They get the opportunity to know that there's a group of people that care about them and are standing behind them. So when they, st when they stand up in court, they, they know that and they feel that and they see it. Baca changes children's lives for the better. It gives them the ability to face the world that at one point they didn't think they'd ever be able to smile again and to be able to smile and say, I'm gonna be successful. And that's, that by itself, if we didn't do anything else, is worth every minute that I'll be giving to Baca. And that's all we wanna do is empower a child not to be afraid.